Um, it hasn't started yet. Hello, everyone, and welcome to session two of four of the um, HyperDoc series. Now, if you haven't been to all of them, it's no big deal. Um, I'll try my best to catch you up. And the HyperDoc series is based around these blended learning lessons that you can create. And they can be either a HyperDoc or a multimedia tech set. Both are kind of um, HyperDocs, and I'm going to explain that difference today in this particular session because the distinction is um, important and it's also confusing. And I think a lot of people are confused by what is a multimedia tech set. And first of all, <laughs> we need to rename it. It's why there's no people here as compared to other sessions. Because when you see, oh, I'm presenting today on multimedia tech sets, people are like, and what's that? Um, one thing that I want to um, talk about, and let me put up the slides while I'm speaking. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about is that these hyper docs, and let's call the umbrella, it's not even really an umbrella, it's not the right categorization of it, but these hyper docs are literally docs with links, but the distinction between what the links go and do and cause the kids to do is the distinction between what is a multimedia tech set and what is a hyperdoc. And we're going to get into that. Um, one of the things that's important is whether or not you're a Google school or a Microsoft school, you just create them in either slides in Google or PowerPoint in, um, in Microsoft or Docs in Google or Word in Microsoft. There's no, there needs to be no like, oh my gosh, I'm a Microsoft school. We don't do HyperDocs. And what I have found is that Microsoft schools haven't been doing HyperDocs because the word's been really out there for Google. And I want to bring Microsoft people in and also the people who are Google who are having to do remote learning or most likely will be doing remote learning again, have this place that they can start to develop. So let's get started with that. So um, many of you know, all those looks like we might have a new person. Um, I'm Holly Clark. <laughs> and I don't know why this is biweekly and why I haven't fixed it because it's only weekly. But if you want to become, um, if you want some tips and ideas during the summer and school year on ways that you can kind of up instruction in your classroom. You can get on the email list, which you can go to at infuse link, infuse dot link um, forward slash tips. And I um, try to give examples from the classroom. Oh, my dryer's done. So we're going to hear a bell right now. But um, during the school year, a little harder right now in the summer. So what I'm doing is giving um, great resources like Matt Miller might do something and I might put it in my um, in my email and so that's what that's about i only do it once a week and you um can do it or not it doesn't matter but it's important to join the community because if you have questions and i'm going to give you a community around hyperdocs um, if you have questions these are great places to go i get so many questions inside of the facebook group so that's a really great place to go and all of these actually are linkable and you're probably saying well i don't have a link to the slides that's coming up i just want to say that this particular session was created with sarah landis so i just wanted to give her a shout out um, she did it with me the first time i'm doing it alone this time but this is who um, this multimedia tech set her and I uh, made this presentation together. So I just wanted to make sure to include her. So if you want to get to this, um, this uh, slide deck, of, uh, I want to say PowerPoint or slide deck, it's, it's both. Um, you can go to infuse.link forward slash MMTS, which is the abbreviation that I use for multimedia tech sets. Some people call them tech sets. Some people call them MTS. So that part also adds to the confusion around multimedia tech sets. So we're going to get going and talk about what they are. And today, that's what we're going to learn. What's a multimedia tech set? So I hope that Terry, who asked the question, I don't understand the difference between the two. I hope I'm able to achieve that she will understand or he. Um, and... Um, and that we're going to experience learning in one first so that as I talk about it, you'll see this distinction, I hope. And next week, we're going to experience learning in a hyperdoc. So if you come next week and you can compare and contrast and then how to get started making a multimedia tech set. Um, so 
If you are just joining us, and I see a lot of people just came in and you haven't said, um, go ahead and say where you're from. And also, it's very helpful for me to know if you're a Microsoft school or a Google school, because then I can kind of talk about the terminology that's best. Like if we're all Google schools right now, which I'm sure we're not. Um, <laughs> there's the first person is, though. Um, uh, well, maybe. Oh, Microsoft. There we go. OK. Uh, it does help me, though, kind of to know. So, um, yeah. OK. It's usually how this is. <laughs> it's pretty uh, half and half. And usually the people from the Microsoft schools are international, to be honest, uh, which is an interesting phenomenon I'm learning about. OK, so um, let's move on and talk about multimedia tech sets. So first of all, um, I want to talk about the Infused Classroom student because that's going to bring us to the multimedia tech set. So I recently wrote a book for the Google School people called the Chromebook Infused Classroom for people who have Chromebooks. It just came out yesterday, actually. And um, in it, I have this framework that we look at instead of asking what we can do with the technology or what we can do for remote learning, what is it that the students can do? And um, and there, and Terry just said Google and Microsoft, which I'm a big fan. I wish I were in a school like that. But anyway, so when we have, when we're talking about the student and we're putting the student first, one of the things that we need to do in asking what the student can do with the technology is activate their curiosity. And I want to talk about this activation of curiosity because this is what I want you to think about when you think about multimedia tech sets. Now, hyperdocs are a full lesson, and I'm going to go in, we're going to learn about proportional reasoning and math, I'm going to do a problem, I'm going to show you how I did that problem, and it's going to happen inside of this doc where I'm moving through the lesson inside of a doc. In a multimedia tech set, we don't do that at all. We just explore. And so we're only activating curiosity. So I want to show you this and we're going to take like five minutes. Well, actually, we're going to take more than that. We're going to take 10 minutes and you're going to go out right now. And some of you will probably not do it. I hope you do, because that's how you learn. But um, you're going to go out to a multimedia tech set. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm trying to activate your curiosity around something. So what I'm going to talk to you about in this multimedia tech set um, is we'll see in a second. I forgot I had this slide. So let me talk about this really quickly. So a multimedia tech set is literally a doc with links. Okay. And it is linked inside of that doc with different forms of media could be written work, a blog post, it could be a video, it could be an image you want kids to dissect. But it's media surrounding a topic. And so the one that we're going to do is around the topic of our students. And our students are, unless we teach kindergarten or first grade, um, they are Gen Z. And we're learning a lot about Gen Z during this time. And so in order to activate your curiosity about our Gen Z learners, I've created a multimedia tech set for you to consume information about them. That's all you're going to do is just consume information in this. And then I might, in it, um, I do believe this one has a question. So you're going to go out and like kind of talk about what you've learned. But, um, but what you're doing is only exploring, only activating curiosity, no other part of the lesson. Now, if um, so let's go do that, and then we'll dissect it after. So it's going to take um, some of you coming into this chat afterwards. But this is what I want you to to think about as we go through this process. So the multimedia tech set is consumption. It's docs with links. You're just gonna, it's packaged. You're going to see this in a second. And it's before I go in and we talk about Gen Z. Um, uh, so this will, so the multimedia tech set that we'll be going to, I'll put the link in here, but there was a link for this slide deck earlier. I can put it in in a second because I just saw a question come up on the side, y'all. So in a moment, when we go to this tech set, I want you to think about it in terms of 
I'm giving you content that's packaged around Gen Z. So I want you to really think about this right now. And although you're not seeing it, just, just think about this. Um, I could use this as a lesson extension, the thing that we're going to do. But what it's supposed to do is build the schema around getting to already knowing something about Gen Z. So there's something that we know about learners. When they have background knowledge, they can connect with content. So what we're doing is that background knowledge so that when we begin to talk about something, let's say it's the Civil War, they've gone out and they've learned about some things about the Civil War before we just start talking about it. So I want you to think about a tech set like that. And then a hyperdoc is this full thing that you're going to see next week. So a hyperdoc is a creation. It's more than a doc with links. There's a lesson flow that's packaged. I'm learning about proportional reasoning. Then I'm going and picking a problem to do. I'm, sh I'm actually doing the problem. And so that is, and I'm doing it at my own time in my own way. Same thing in a multimedia tech set. I'm doing it my own time in my own way. So let's do it and then we'll deconstruct it when we're done. So this is it. You're going to go to this link. You're going to go to infuse.link forward slash Gen Z one. And last time I think people said a couple links didn't work. I tried to fix them, but just in case I messed up. Um, uh, what you're going to do, and please listen to instructions right now, okay? Because this is really important for how you lay it out with, with students. So you can see that when you go to it, so let me head over, and um, I actually can't. When you go to it, you're going to see that there are 12, I think, boxes. Maybe there's 10, and I, I'm going to give you eight minutes to go look around and learn something about Gen Z. The only thing I'm going to ask you to do is in those 10 minutes or eight minutes, watch the future of work. That's your only thing. But besides that, you can do and go anywhere you want. And um, so go click on that link and I'm going to put it right here. So if it makes it easier and I'm going to go to it in a second too, to make sure that all the links work. I tried to fix them, but things break. That's something about these links. So go there, click on it. And now for eight minutes and I'm going to put a timer. Okay, Google set a timer for eight minutes. Eight minutes. Now. Okay, so Google's waiting for you. And when you hear the Google timer go off, you're going to come back. So you're going to go out. <laughs> I have Alexa sitting right next to her too. <laughs> I have both. But anyway, um, so go ahead and go out. And now your eight minutes is yours. Now, for those of you who might not be at Google Schools, you have to click on the image and then the link appears below and then you go click on that. And you click on the red play button to get to the video.
I've been um, told that a couple links don't work, so I'm fixing those right now. The infographic one um, might be a little harder, but the alpha gen one now works. Time check, there's two and a half minutes left. about a minute and a half. Okay, <clears throat> stop. Okay, so we are at our eight minute mark. And um, some really good suggestions came in, something I should take the time to do and keep trying to remember to do it. These videos should have been put into view per pure, sorry, I'm saying it wrong, so that you just go to a page with only that video. There are no other things on the side for kids to get 
um, distracted by. And there's also no commercial ahead of time. So that was a really good um, reminder from um, Becca because <laughs> I've been meaning to do that. <laughs> Also, um, yes, sometimes the links get messed up because you uh, you have to try them at school, things like that. But I want you to use the discussion. Um, oh, very nice. Thank you. Um, I, I want you to use the chat window right now to tell me how did it feel instead of me telling you about Gen Z? How did it feel to um, I don't know what happened there. We lost. Uh the slides for a second. Uh oh, someone started sharing. Ooh. That's interesting. Okay. Um, so um, how did it feel to work in this way instead of me just telling you about Gen Z? And I want you to answer in the um, in the uh, chat. So um, Stacy says she liked being able to explore. Terry liked said there were learning styles involved, so visual and um, and others. Um, liked that there were patterns and visible, so learning reinforced, free choice. I liked the choice format. I liked being able to watch before I uh, looked, before I, before I uh, read, I think. Um, and I think what is being said there is like, for me, at least anyway, I like to watch videos <laughs> or reading sometimes. <laughs> um, nice to focus on was most interesting to me. Yep. Um, it was overwhelming at first. And this is so true. But I really enjoy all of the options. And this is what happens. And I'm so glad that Susan brought this up because especially for us who are not Gen Z, um, it can be overwhelming. And when kids are playing the videos in class, it can be overwhelming. But um, and there are some kids with some autism and things like this that really can't have that noise. So I will send them to another part of the classroom or whatever. But um, but we get used to it really, really quickly. And I can tell you when I've done this, this is actually a, um, a tech set that I use with adults when I'm trying to teach them about like why we need technology in the classroom and why we need to understand who our students are. Um, at first, like the videos start going and every in, like, I don't want to say older because I'm an old teacher, but teachers who are my age, maybe. <laughs> um, they um, get really uncomfortable and they're like, I don't like this. And then they soften. They soften in about a minute. They start laughing at Ellen and they start laughing at whatever. And they they all soften. So um, I say I agree. I liked how you gave us um, one we all had to watch, right? And, and I did that because, first of all, I wanted you to watch that. But it makes it feel like, okay, I, do, I can't just be willy-nilly. And I felt like that kind of anchor um just does something just one thing um and so uh what's hard i will say i i don't normally do these tech sets in this um in this environment and we don't have all our videos going if we were in a class we would have all our videos going so it might look different and i could tell if the kids were were um, actually watching stuff i couldn't see that with you guys and from a teacher point of view that's really hard but what I was doing here or attempting to do is activate your curiosity about who these kids are that we learn before I come in. So picture I'm at your school for a PD day. I'm going to start with this before going in on technology. I'm going to take 10 minutes to remind you in a very, and I'm going to use that word again, soft way that these are our kids. This is who we're teaching. So I'm going to talk to you today about technology, and it's kind of important that you listen. And because I do this tech set first, I have all ears. And the teachers who were grading homework, and this happens a lot, who come into a PD session and they're grading homework, they, they've they now um, put that down and they've watched some funny Ellen videos, which made them happy. And now they're listening. And so while these are adult learners, the same situation happens in a tech set. Um, 
if if um if I want to talk about let's say um, the outsiders, and I always talk about the outsiders because I taught that book more than anything else, but um, uh, the outsiders takes place in 1960 Tulsa, right? So for kids to have background knowledge about 1960s Tulsa and to be able to connect in the way I need them to connect with this book, I would do a text set about the 1960s. I might do a text set about Tulsa so that they have some background knowledge about this town that these kids live in and that Oklahoma is quite different than San Diego, California. So do you see that connection I'm trying to make that like, um, that like, I don't just, um, leave kids without the background knowledge, which is one of the missing components in our knowledge schemata often. And so I see some people over here talking about eight second attention span way different than when I started in 1990. <laughs> um, maybe. Yeah, but yes, and it's getting worse. And TikTok's probably making that even worse, right? Um, your 15 second videos that kids watch all day long. So uh, I want you to think of this as that activation of curiosity. And I hope, Terry, that this is making more sense now as compared with the hyperdoc. The hyperdoc, I would now, if this were a hyperdoc, and a hyperdoc for me wouldn't look like this. This is like a game board. I made it like a game board, right? It's like, a, ooh, I'm going to get a badge and I'm going to go over there. And that makes it more appealing to kids. And then, of course, in a hyperdoc, if it were a hyperdoc, we would go and and, and we, uh, we would create something that showed Gen Z uh, that we understood it. Or we would go watch a movie or like, I don't know what we would do, but because I don't know if I can make this particular one into a hyperdoc. Um, but so that's the difference on those. So now that we have explored and learned inside of a hyperdoc, um, Okay, so I'm going to um, stop for a second and look at Stacy's question. She asked, this is sort of a teachery question, but do you have kids respond once they've um, explored or do they discuss right? So great question. And we love teachery questions. It depends on honestly my mood, right? Like everything I do in a classroom. Sometimes I want them to go talk about it with each other and then talk to each other and then record a flip grid about it or talk to each other and then talk as a class even. Um, it just depends what I'm trying to get at. And in this particular situation, I was just trying to activate curiosity around Gen Z, but in classes where I do this, when I'm doing the PD, I have people talk and you should see the conversations they get in. Oh yeah, my kid did this. And I remember when I didn't even know how to use my iPhone and I can't stop people from talking. And another thing that happens, um, uh, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a second, Becca, but that has, a, you know, that's why we need to use um, view pure. And then we can also get into um, having closed captioning. But um, what was I get? What was I saying? Um, I can't remember now. <laughs> um, oh, what happens with this particular doc is um, I have a notification on it and I can tell when people go on to it and it'll, I'll get a little notification on my phone and on my um, computer screen. And when I leave the training that day and I'm getting on the plane to go home, all of a sudden around dinner time, all the links start coming up. Someone's on your thing. Someone's on your thing. Oh, don't worry, Becca. <laughs> um, someone's on your thing. Someone's on your thing. And um, it's because they've gone home and showed their husband, you got to see this future of work or, oh my God, you gotta watch this funny Ellen video. And, and so that shows how engaged they were in, in this um, activation of curiosity. And it makes my day, if I don't use this, my day is not as good as if I activate teacher curiosity or really the why behind what we're doing that day in, in that PD. So let's go look at some other examples because they don't all look like game boards and they don't all have to look like game boards, but we're going to explore them and you can click on them and we can do this together. So I'm going to, hold on, my phone's ringing. I want to turn it off. Um, I am going to... Uh, stop presenting for a second and I'm going to come out to see oops, give me a second the first hyperdoc 
and I don't even know if it's the first one. Hold on, let's just say, uh, sorry. There we go, desktop window. Okay, so this is the one I want you guys to go look in. It's called Once Upon a Time, and it's a fictional narrative and creative writing. And I want you just to look at how this is just a table inside of a white, um, a white piece. I mean, like, it's not as creative looking. And I want you to think about, are you as, um, are you as attracted to it? Is it fine? Does it make any difference to you? It may not. And it's fine if it doesn't. Um, it has you read the invisible alligators. Now you're going to watch an imaginative narrative and listen to the kids that miss something. I don't I haven't done this one. Then you're going to explore what story starters are in story mapping. You're going to go look at Wonderopolis about some um, of those things. Like if I click on Wonderopolis, it's going to ask a question I wonder about. And so kids are out in Wonderopolis looking at certain things. And I don't know why it just goes to this page. It should go to one of these. Who invented like cuneiform or something like this. But this is about writing. So maybe there's different types of writing is what they're trying to get out at. Because th this is different writing. So interesting. I could get lost in this, <laughs> to be honest. And I think a lot of kids could. What are hieroglyphs? Like, it's been a while since I looked at hieroglyphs, even though I taught sixth grade history for many years. Um, and then we're going to review the parts of the story. So now we're looking at fictional narrative and creative writing as an explore, as an activation of curiosity before we start a narrative creative writing unit. So um, I'm going to come back to our little chat. So what do you think about this one? It's not as visually appealing. Thanks, Stacey. I didn't think so either, but it could just be me, but it does get the job done. <laughs> So like if you are on the fly and let's be honest, there are many times I have come up with lessons in the shower. I can probably get to school in time to make this one. Now, maybe the links I need to check and maybe that would be a little bit harder. But the vertical structure, Stacy says, it makes it feel more chronological and less choice like. Very interesting. So as you design, maybe that's something you want to think about. Um it's still interesting, and someone said it's still interesting and attractive, and the response area might be more meaningful for some teachers. Um, very, very true. So let's go, and there's no right or wrong here. This is just a way for you to explore and see the difference that you don't have to make a game board. I'm going to be honest with you. I make a game board every time. <laughs> my kids are probably sick of the darn game board, and probably next year that needs to be my goal to not, because I like the appeal of it. And so I often just take that Gen Z game board and just refill it with other stuff. I did it just the other day when I was talking um, another PD that I, I'm doing with these teachers in India. And um, I, uh, I did it in the game board. <laughs> so let's go back and let's go to the one. And you can find this one that's black and white. And it's about the civil rights movement. Let's go look at this one. Now, this one, again is in that game board scenario. So click around in this one and see what you think. Now there is some directions in the middle, which I think is important. It says click on the image in each square to deepen your understanding of the civil rights movement. What are you wondering? What angers you? How would you describe the civil rights era? So obviously um, there might even need to be a little teaching before this one because what is civil rights? And if you're going to teach this to 13 year olds, I live in a 13 year old world. So um, I'm always thinking like, I can't just go in and start with civil rights, but maybe I can after this. So I'm going to watch Eyes on the Prize. I'm going to listen to it. I have a dream speech. And maybe this is, um, this is a resource that they take home as a uh, homework that they're doing around something. This is, um, this looks really nice. Um, so I want you to six principles of nonviolence. Imagine yourself at the March on Washington. 
So let's click around and see, and here's the March on Washington, probably PBS, maybe probably in a view pure better than mine. Hmm, interesting. So this is a primary source document. Isn't that nice? So this is interesting. So I'm gonna come back. What are your thoughts on this one? Have I ever done it on pad that I haven't, but I have friends who have. I've also had friends who've made something similar on a Jamboard, if we're going Google. Um, and how wonderful for our Microsoft people would putting a multimedia text set in a Teams tab be. So everyone's there, everyone sees it, I'm focused, we're all out uh, doing our own thing, but coming back to this one place where it's more centered. Um, so what did you guys think about the, um, uh, so um, Karen says she likes the props around the page, explore, infer, watch, study, like that is nice. And it makes me like, I'm of course going to go to, I'm, like as a kid, now I'd be better at it, but I would stay away from the study one <laughs> and I'd be going over to the watch one. Um, so yeah, those are, that's really nice. It is more like the game board. But look at the coloring. It's interesting, the coloring. Like the person really thought about this. It's almost a piece of art, to be honest with you. It's been done in like newspaper font. Like there's a lot going on there. It's like when you go to the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum in, um, in Washington, DC, the museum itself is an artifact. So um, it says, uh, I see one that says, I wonder if it's just like with everything, how you provide enough information without providing too much info. Yeah. And this just makes a really easy way to get started. For me, this is where I started with HyperDocs. I made these. And then I felt really good about it because I was getting good. And then I started to delve and put my toe into the HyperDoc situation because I felt like I could do this and I could design. And I was, you know, and I always went and I took other people's HyperDocs and I made them my own. And I never found a hyperdoc that worked perfectly for me or a multimedia tech set ever. So sometimes Terry, by the way, if you're, hopefully you're still with us, um, looks like you are. Um, sometimes when I go out to the hyperdocs site and I'm gonna give you guys all this, I'm gonna put it right now. You can go anytime to hyperdocs.co. If you sign into their site and you just say that Holly Oh, sorry, that's our Facebook page. If you sign into their site, they have free courses right now. And I think that free courses are going to go away. And they have a whole area on multimedia tech sets. So you're going to see a lot of these same ones. And they're going to just be explained by Sarah, who isn't with us today. But, um, but if you go there and you are on the site or you are on the HyperDocs site for their um, Facebook group, You'll see a lot of people post up HyperDocs and you might go to it and go, uh, I mean, I don't think that's a HyperDoc. And it might not be because not everyone's doing this correctly. People f have heard of HyperDocs and multimedia tech sets and they think they know what they are, but often they don't. Um, and I find that in schools I go to, like I'll say, hey, I'm going to talk about HyperDocs and teachers are always like, yeah, we do that already. And I say, I'm like, can I see? And it's never right. It's it's always a multimedia tech set that they think is a hyperdoc. Okay, so let's go look at another one really quickly. Um, let's go look at this narrative one. Here's the same kind of narrative. Um, how is a narrative different? What is a narrative? Time to conquer the the white. Um, Eleven. Oh, that's my favorite narrative. <laughs> I love me some Sandra Cisneros and some similes. Um, and so they're going to go read 11, which is so short and easy for a kid to look at. Um, and then um, they're going to say, how is the narrative constructed? I don't know about this particular one for sure. Because for me, I don't know if a kid can go out and read Sandra's scenarios unless this is a high school class and get the narrative thing on their own. So I would have to look into this one. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I need to click around. Like, let's listen. All great stories have. So I'm going to listen to someone tell me what all great stories have in a podcast. That might be interesting. 
And then at the end, they end this one with time to try instead of something else. Mine didn't have a time to try, but this one has a time to try. And um, for me, if I came to this hyperdoc, I don't love this font. That's just Holly Clark. I don't like that font. Other people might be like, I love this font. And so I would switch out the font. Or I might switch out the couple of the squares and I might not have them read Sandra Cisneros, you know, something like this. Um, so let's keep, let's go look at the rats. This one's interesting to me. I want you to take a minute and click around in the rats one. And I don't know if I want to rot watch a rats video. I got to be honest. <laughs> And um, it's obvious uh, it needs to be in view pure as well. Rats save humans from landmines. Okay, maybe I'll watch that. So we're going to look at good rats, putting rats to work. And it's a scholastic article. Rats can be disgusting, but so it looks like we're going to look at the good part of rats because I came into this not really wanting to check out rats, but and it's weird, right? I don't know if anyone else felt this way about this one, but I was not into it. But it looks like after I go through these, I might have a little bit more, and we'll use the word again, softness towards rats. Hmm, interesting. Anyone else? I'm going to look in the chat right now. Um, how do we get these? Here, let me, oh, did someone give you the link? Oh, sorry. Let me put this in. Infuse.link forward slash MMTS. There you go. And that'll take you to the slide deck. And in the slide deck, you'll be able to click on them and find them. Now, Marilyn brought up the immersive reader option for HyperDocs, um, which is amazing for those kids who might need that um, Sandra Cisneros um, 11 read to them. And this is where Microsoft wins everything. Um, because in Word, in PowerPoint, in anything, you can activate um, Immersive Reader. Now, there is, if you're a Google school, um, there is a Chrome extension for Immersive Reader, which will read it. And um, I'm using Google Chrome right now, and I don't have the extension up, but it's, it's automatically inside of um, Edge browser, which Edge is actually Chromium, so it's the same thing. So... That is really one of the advantages of being a Microsoft school and be able to build these. But you could also, in a Google school, use text help if you have that. Um, I think text help isn't used as much as it should be in schools, Google schools. Um, and text help is a Chrome extension that um, kids have to pay for, but or your school has to pay for for the kids, but it reads to them, it highlights certain words, got a picture dictionary just like um, Immersive Reader, which is free. <laughs> it's why I've come over to the uh, Microsoft side a bit. It's because th there's some good tools here. And I had been all Google all the time. And I feel um, I feel like I was letting myself down. OK, so let me go back and let's look and see if we saw all of those. Um, give me one second. No, it's not going to let me move this. So let me see if this does it. Okay, give me one sec. I'm going to come back and I'm just going to stop presenting and I'm going to go back just to the um, to the PowerPoint. And we're going to look now at what made that so interesting. And I have to just go through these again. So, um, so we looked at most of these, let's see, we didn't do the mind brain education, which would be one you could look at on your own. Um, and let me see, I'm getting new messages. I want to make the video turned off earlier. So thanks for telling me that, Terry. I appreciate it. You guys are like the best. You're becoming my friends who I only see your TF circle. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway so um oh that's so nice anyway so uh 
we've looked at those and then we last time we did the gen z after looking at those which i felt it was important to really experience it before looking through them so i kind of switched that around but this is the cycle of learning that hyperdocs really ascribes to in which remote learning needs to ascribe to so what we're doing in remote learning often is we're doing the lecture homework project or test but Hyperdoc says instead, let's have the explain, ex well, really it's explore, explain, apply. Um, but so, sorry, I kind, of, I kind of messed that up. The explain via a lecture is our old model, apply during homework, assess it by a project or a test. But the new way, and this is where I got it messed up, I'm sorry, should be this, the explore. We explored in that tech set of Gen Z. Now I'm gonna to explain to you if we're in a PD, I, we explored with Gen Z, I'm gonna explain some tech tools that really meet their needs. And then you're going to apply it by playing and working through those tools as we're in that PD. So it's a different model. And so as we go into remote learning, we wanna remember this explore and they can do the explore at home and come into Teams or Meet or Zoom and really talk about what they learned in that exploratory set or that tech set. Um, or multimedia tech set, giving it lots of different different names. I like to call it an explore board, but it hasn't taken on. <laughs> so I won't confuse you with that. Um, oh, look, that's very nice. So we've, um, uh, there's a color wheel to um, help you with your design, which is really nice. Um, thank you. I like explore board too, but it's not catched on, it's not caught on. So anyway, so what in a hyperdoc, we're doing all of these in a multimedia tech set, we're only doing the explore. So if that helps, again, kind of uh, legitimize that. So again, so we're going to be going through this template next week. This is a template for hyperdocs because in hyperdocs, you're doing all of these steps. But again, just to reinforce that you're only doing the explore section, and that's it. And then you could go on and go into a hyperdoc if you want. Doesn't mean you have to stop. It just means that's what a hyperdoc is. And can you imagine, like, you you can make hyperdocs. I'm sorry, multimedia tech sets for resources around. Like my kids are always very interested in the Holocaust that I have to teach in eighth grade, and they want to learn more, and they're so into it. So I make another kind of explore board around little videos they could watch that I know are appropriate and they could learn more about it because they don't get enough time uh, in, in school to learn about that. So, um, or the way the standards were, which I don't know if all that's going to change. Um, so here's the purpose, when to design a multimedia tech set. And here's another one, another really nice explore board. Um, of kids exploring immigration before we start to talk about it. This would probably be a high school one, um, but we're gonna design it to package the content for students, to build that schema. I always call it background knowledge, so sorry if I'm doing my hand behind, but that's what I think of. Like I come into this unit with some background knowledge and it helps me hold on to the information. It makes the information sticky when I do that. So um, it helps build that part and it extends the lesson if that's in fact what you want to do. So maybe it's not at the beginning, it's just the extension piece and it prepares kids for the lessons that they're going to go into. And that is just so needed in remote learning, really, really needed. Because if I'm going to talk to you during our team's meeting about organelles and plant and animal cells, I want you to have watched some stuff about it, how important they are. Maybe listen to a rap song about it. My kids love, or kids I get to work with, love the rap song. <laughs> um, and there's lots of them. So uh, that kind of thing. I'd fill my document with that. Um, and the benefits of it is it, it's stimulating and it's inquiry based. So um, from that, from this refugee multimedia tech set, exploratory board, whatever you want to call it, explore board. Maybe kids now have some questions they want to ask about refugees. And now we might go into an inquiry unit. 
because we've built their curiosity. We've given them agency to go around um, the board. And if we've done it right, the way some people have pointed out in this doc, I mean, in our chat, we've incorporated those UDL principles of having closed captioning going on those videos, which is important and I should have going. Having immersive reader ready to go. And so incorporating all of that, and here's the beauty, you guys know this, once you build one, except for I had to change out a couple of the links in that Generation Z one, it's, I can use it next year. I can make it better as things come around. Um, and so that's really nice. Oh, this would be really great for lit circles. Um, and stations, right? Which is kind of that same thing. So, um, so, oh, this long walk to water used to look different. And I think that's what she wanted to show you. And I, oh, there it is. There's the long walk to water before. It's that one, like that purple one we saw about um, writing. It wasn't as interesting because it was linear. And then they took that and they put it into that explore board that I love. Look how much more interesting it is. I think if you give a kid a choice, hey, you're going to do this document or this, they're the same, but pretend they're always going to pick that other one, I think, because it's visual. Um, and I uh, can't see what you see. Oops. Is it not? Presenting. Let me see. Let me see. Thanks, Karen. You guys are always there for me. So let me go. Can you see now? So people were probably following along with me, it looks like. But this is where I was. So I was talking before about this refugee. And I was talking before about this immigration so that you can know where I was. Um, it's really sad that this whole time you weren't seeing that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and so now, um, really quickly, this was this one in the back, the long walk to water is redone here at this one. Hopefully you see that. And I think it's amazing the difference. I think a kid really would re like the second one better. Um, so where can you get the template for the Explore board? I really appreciate KB for asking that. Um, you can go to their site, hyperdocs.co, and get a template. You can take the Gen Z one and just take everything out. So the beauty of Google Docs, and you have the same thing in Microsoft, but I just don't know how to do it as easily. Um, in Google Docs, let me show you. Let me go to Gen Z really quick. So give me a second because this is really important. And a lot of people are always asking me for my um, HyperDocs and they don't have to ask for it. They're asking, they ask for permission to them. Let me show you what to do. So I got to stop presenting for a second. And then um, I'm going to ask you guys if you can see this because I'd hate to go through this whole process and you can't see. So can you see, um, well, can you see Gen Z right now? And I'm going to come back and look. And my messages. Okay, perfect. So Gen Z, if I go here to file and make a copy, then I can just call it copy of Gen Z text or I can give it a name and I press OK and it makes a new copy for me and that's mine to keep. Now, if I'm a Google person, I mean, if I'm doing this and I made a copy and it's Google and I am a Microsoft school, then my next thing that I want to do is come here to file. I want to download and I want to make it a Microsoft Word doc. And it will make it look exactly the same. And the best part is in Microsoft Word, you have reader mode. And it makes it so much nicer. So that's how you deal with that. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to stop presenting. I know my neighbors must think, who the heck is she talking to? Um, put back on my camera. Probably stop sharing. OK. Um, and so that's how you um, do that. And let me make sure that I have this part finished because we are coming to the close. It goes by so fast. Let me make sure I've gotten to all the slides. I have to click through them really quick again. So um, that's a multimedia tech set. Now, 
you can go to the hyperdocs.co and you can um, you can sign up there. You could, they have a whole section just on multimedia tech sets. Um, and this is the difference if you want to know and you have access to these slides that um, a multimedia tech set's a doc with links to a variety of media. We talked about that. Where, where a hyperdoc's a digital lesson with links to a variety of media. But on a, so all that's the same. But it includes one or more opportunities for students to connect beyond the classroom, to collaborate, to create, to do things that you're not doing inside of that multimedia tech set. Um, and you can make it, yes, view only when you assign it. So I don't know what conversation was going there, but um, you can make it view only, just the reader mode's still better. <laughs> In Microsoft, I was like, what is this? This is the best. Um, it's just because it brings it forward and makes it clickable, um, where in Google Docs, you always have to click and go down. So that's the part that's different that I really enjoy. Um, so, um, so if you go here to this bit.ly to explore multimedia tech sets, we put a bunch in there for you to go play with later. You can find ones you like, file, make a copy and then make them a Microsoft Word document or make them for your own drive. And so that's really nice. And there's a, lots of them there. Um, if I click on it, you can't see what I click on, but you can play with that. It looks like this. So there's ones for writing, reading, um, and you can just go explore those. So now you've got lots of resources. Um, there's a YouTube tutorial on how to remix it for Microsoft that I made to give people everything that they need. And um, if you go to this section in their hyperdocs.co um, uh, and you click on these and she, she linked it right to it, she, you can go watch a short video on the difference between a multimedia uh, tech set and hyperdoc because you need to be the aficionados that go back to your schools now. And, and like I have had to become and be like, yeah, that's not a hyperdoc, sorry. But you have there's a doc with links and it's great and it's fine, but it's a multimedia tech set. So anyway, we are at our time. Um, uh, let me see if there are any questions. I do have office hours. We just have to come out of here and then we have to go over to the office hours because it's a different link. Um, yes, teachers give teachers is uh, the, the site's being redone too. So you can go there at any time and also um, put in, I teach reading in seventh grade. Um, let's say it's the outsiders <laughs> and you can find outsider um, uh, examples that people have posted there. Again, I've never found an outsiders that works for me because I have my own way of teaching, but I've taken people's outsiders and I've made them my own. Um, so choice boards to me are really the choice that you, in how you're going to answer something. Um, and not always, but often, and um, multimedia tech sets are the closest to a choice board, but the way that I've seen teachers use choice board has been around um, consuming, so that part's right, and then around how they're gonna respond to a question or, or a unit at the end. Um, and Becca answered really well. I think multimedia tech sets is info, information, and choice boards are activities. Yeah, and, they, and choice boards to me, um, they're not, they don't have the strong pedagogy that a hyper doc does. Anyway, so um, hopefully this was uh, helpful. And if you have questions, that's what the office hours is about, by the way, to ask more questions about this, if you still have some um, and Sometimes people come for 10 minutes and sometimes they come for the whole hour. It's up to you. And um, I will be over in that link. So I'm going to stop recording. And next week, same time, three o'clock Thursday, we're going to go experience learning inside of a hyperdoc and learn more about those. So we'll see you all then, I hope.